you may be asking yourself, what the hell am I looking at? I'll tell you what you're looking at. A hasty made fillet weld brake apparatus. So what we're gonna do today is we're gonna do two welds. We're gonna do one short circuit weld and one spray transfer weld on a T-joint. We're gonna put them in this little apparatus, apply a mechanical advantage, and we're gonna break the weld or at least attempt to break the weld. And we're gonna look at the fusion line uh, between both types of transfer modes. So we're gonna start off with spray transfer. We're gonna run 400 inches a minute on our wire feed speed, 27.5 on our bolts, and we're gonna run 40 CFH of a 90-10 mix, 90% argon and 10% CO2 to achieve a true spray transfer. Let's get to it. All right, let's talk welding symbols for a second. Today we're gonna to do a, a T-joint and we're gonna do a fillet weld inside that T-joint. So that symbol would look something similar to this. Here's our fillet weld symbol. This leg right here is vertical. The vertical side of the symbol always goes on the left. We're gonna do a quarter inch weld. So that leg height of the fillet weld is always gonna be on the left hand side of the weld symbol. And it's gonna be, since the symbol is on the bottom of the reference line, that tells me that it's gonna be where the arrow is pointing, okay? So if the symbol was up here, I would put that fillet weld over here, but it's not. Arrow side, right here, right where the arrow is pointing. And we're gonna have a quarter inch from the base metal up to the toe, and then the base metal to this toe. In addition, let's go ahead and put ourselves a special little note. We're gonna go ahead and do GMAW spray for this weld. All right, so for materials thicker than 5 16 um, I prefer to go with a pulse spray or a just regular spray transfer. If I'm gonna be in flat position, I like spray transfer better. If I gotta go out of position, pulse spray is the way to go when we're dealing with a gas molar welding process or MIG welding. As you can see, I mean, the puddle just flows in there really nice, really smooth. It's got a lot more punch to it, so I get a lot more depth of fusion into the root, which is where I want you know, that weld to be. I wanna penetrate into that root as well as in the sidewalls of the plates that I'm working with. And you just can't get that type of effect. You can't get that type of heat with a short circuit. You're limited, you know, from 16 to 22 volts in there. And hopefully with, that dem with the demonstration that we're doing right now, we're gonna be able to show you exactly that. All right, so we're gonna walk through here and just check. See that we have a quarter inch weld. And we do. Let's go ahead and do the short circuit. All right, we're gonna go ahead and operate on the higher end of short circuit. Give it the benefit of the doubt. It's about 22 volts and about 325 inches a minute on the wire feed speed. We switched over to 7525 gas and run about 15 CFH. With short circuit, what's actually happening is that wires, it's literally creating a dead short, right? So you're short circuiting 20 to 200 times per second as that wire is impacting that puddle, right? So a lot of your heat just kind of builds up. It doesn't penetrate into the base metal. Hopefully that's the results that we're gonna show you um, when we break these things open is lack of penetration into the, um, into the root of the weld. And that's generally why, you know, short circuit is used for thinner materials, you know, 5 16 or less, because you can get adequate penetration. But once we started getting into, you know, 3 8 plate, anything bigger than that, structural applications, you know, you really wanna put that short circuit down switch over to a higher amperage machine that's gonna be able to run and change your gas out to a 82% or higher mixture. All right, so let's go ahead and check this one. Looking for a quarter inch. Looks like we landed it. It's exactly what we were looking for. These plates are hot. I'm gonna wait until they cool down to at least room temperature before I go to break them because we wanna keep everything equal across the two. So while we're waiting, I'm gonna go grab a bang. Cameraman's probably gonna put some fancy little music in there, maybe a little pop-up uh, for a timer. Uh, we'll see you in a couple minutes. <sighs> Nothing like a good bang after a hard day of welding, huh? Now that we're back, we're gonna show you exactly what the hell that thing is. So all I wanna do here is break this weld. It's meant to be broken. So we're gonna break it. We're gonna check depth of fusion. If the plate doesn't break, folds over on itself, which I doubt is 3 8 plate. I don't think it's gonna fold over on itself. But if it does, that means it's an acceptable weld. Uh, if it breaks, it can be an acceptable weld. We just gotta or check the depth of fusion. We'll be able to see that once we expose the root of the weld. So I'm gonna go ahead and apply the mechanical advantage and uh, hopefully snap this thing open. <laughs> Got an idea. There we go. As you can see, there is no depth of fusion into the corner of the two 
joints or the, the plate. That's a hard edge right there. Got barely, in, maybe a little bit of penetration at here, which would be the end of the weld. But throughout the rest of the weld, there was nothing. So that's short circuit. Let's take a look at the other side of the plate. So as you can see right here, this is right up to the edge where our plate was, where that root should be, where we should have tied into the root. Absolutely no penetration in this area whatsoever. Let's go ahead and uh, we're gonna attempt to bend the spray transfer. See how that works out for us. All right, so see how we got this wavy line in here? That's all that depth of fusion into the plate. So it burned in pretty good. Go ahead and check the other side. So right here, see how we don't have a, a hard defined edge, right? That means that the plate was sitting further on this, it burnt deeper into that plate, okay? <clears throat> That's why we use spray transfer. We've got a better depth of fusion. All right, so as you can see, the one on your left, that is the short circuit transfer. The one on the right is the spray. Now you'll notice on the short circuit side, you can see that hard defined edge. That's the corner of the plate where we got no penetration into the root. The one, however, on your right, I mean, you could see that wavy line right there where it broke in and tied into that root. So, I mean, that's, that's why we use spray transfer for structural applications when we're doing these things and not short circuit on plates, you know, thicker than 5 16 of an inch. All right, so hopefully that sheds some light for you guys on uh, spray versus short circuit, why we use one over the other for different applications. Like I said, 5 16 or less, short circuit is, you know, it's, it's more than fine. I mean, it, it's a great running process transfer mode. Um, when you start getting into thicker materials, you know, switch over to that spray transfer. I gotta say the, uh, the Everlast performed really well on the spray transfer. I was uh, pleasantly surprised. So hope you guys were able to learn something. Uh, if you got any questions or comments, go ahead and drop them in the comment section. I'll be happy to answer them for you. Until next time, make every well better than your last.